Celtics, remember, Rondo and the Celtics came back in the Cleveland series in the conference semifinals. They had won game two on the road, split the first two, came back and got blown out. It was the worst home playoff loss in franchise history. Cleveland beat them by 29. Since then, they've reeled off five straight wins. This will be number six when the clock finally winds down. And the last time a team seeded fourth or lower won this many in a row in the playoffs, Back in 1999, when the eight-seeded Knicks won six in a row on their way to the finals. But as you guys both have kept saying, this is not a four-seed win healthy. Exactly. You, you look at this team, and with Rondo's improvement, let's just say that Pierce, Garnett, and Ray Allen have all slipped just a little bit. Whether age, health, whatever. But Rondo's improvement is so, so big. And if Rasheed Wallace continues to play like this, along with Big Baby, you can make the case that the bench is every bit as strong as the P.J. Brown, James Posey bench of the 2008 year. And you look back at 2008, remember the first round? Again, seven games against the Hawks, then seven games against the Cavs, and then even the Pistons beat them on their home floor early in the conference finals. It was a struggle. Right now, they are just blowing out the best teams in the NBA. And we'll take another break. 6.59 remaining. Boston in complete control all night long. Eighty-five fifty-six. That is not a mistake. That's the score with 6.59 remaining. And right from the opening period when the Celtics went up 27-12, they were just playing harder and playing better. And I can remember as a young fellow watching Larry Bird make the same type of play in the Boston Garden. Rondo just sacrificing his body hitting the deck just a thing of beauty remember the old dave cowan's play too of him diving on the floor and sliding across the old parquet floor as we check in with doris Burke. well guys what a difference one year ago makes when they bowed out of the playoffs last year danny ainge ripped rajon rondo on radio here in boston saying essentially he had to be a better leader there was talk that there were conflicts between rajon rondo and doc some of the words that came out were unquotable to which rajon said listen i absolutely needed to be a better leader listener but when you go to uncoachable he said i think that's a big slap in the face i'm very coachable he said it's never been a selfish thing i'm a strong-willed guy he said it can be a strength and a weakness obviously jeff that was to your point his strong will may be his greatest asset as well well ain't said that he needed to grow up it was even talked that would the celtics be thinking about trading him would they listen to offers of course, as we mentioned earlier in this series, when the trades were made for both Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, the GMs on those teams that made the trades, they wanted Rondo in the deal, but Danny Ainge wouldn't let him go back then. He knew he had somebody special. And as Nelson pulls up. But in, and again, I, I've been I played this league 17 years. I've been around coaches that would have said, one of us got to go. I can't put up with this guy. Dockerman understood he had a gem and he just had to, to work it out. And I agree with you because when Mark was my point guard, I said, one of us has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I've been there. You know, Rivers always, he talks about Red Auerbach, the late great Red Auerbach, the advice that he gave him, he said, when you have a problem player, you don't just say, let's get rid of him. The idea is, you know what? Work with him. He's your player. Make him your player. And he said he never forgot that. So even though there are guys that he doesn't like their games or attitude sometimes, he tries to see if things can get better. And it's obviously happened a couple of times. He did it with Pierce, and he's done it with Rondo. And as Wallace can't handle the pass. And another timeout. The Celtics having their way tonight here in Game 3. ESPN's present around. And then tip off shortly after 8.30 Eastern Time. Magic and the Celtics game four as Boston on the verge of taking a commanding 3 0 lead in this best of seven series. They have been in control throughout, and Kevin Garnett watching what's become a tradition there on the big screen. They play old clips from American Bandstand in with the fans dancing in the stands at the current game, and that gentleman there in the full views. His name was Gino. He's become a huge tradition here where they all try and dance like Gino back from the old classic TV show American Bandstand. The players get a huge kick out of it and the fans love it. Uh, certainly on nights like this. Is American Bandstand still on? No, I don't think so. Rondo with the steal. 
Austin Stanley has seen some action. And try half court alley oop to Perkins. I think Perk's last alley oop was back in high school in Texas. Owns in high school where he was a terrific player. I'm just thinking, I'd have got thrown out of my neighborhood dancing my team. Just on the drive. And by the way, let me take time out to tell my guy, happy birthday, Mike Green. Hap, what is it, 60? <laughs> That's just a low blow. Just because I was mistaken for Jerry Sloan earlier in the playoffs doesn't mean you can take that, that mean shot at me. But happy birthday, man. Absolutely. I guess I'm getting my gift after the game? <laughs> Your gift is working with Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> That's a big gift right there. Meanwhile, a standing ovation for Rajon Rondo. 11 points. And 12 assists, and as we've shown several times already tonight, that play where he dove on the floor, took it away from Jason Williams and put in the layup, and that epitomized this game, in many ways, this series. Michael Singley, home go. There's 58 points for Orlando. Sheldon Williams is also in. One of those Celtic bench players, they're playing defense like it's a first game. Brandon Bass, seeing his first minutes of the series, throws it down. Free agent who came from Dallas. But I like that move by Bass. That's making a statement. That's making a statement saying, I want to play. I agree. Davis misses, and just tuning in, seeing the end of this one, Davis was a big spark in that first half. Davis has 17 points and 23 minutes off the bench. And as Jeff pointed out earlier, the Celtic bench between Davis, and Rashid Wallace, and Tony Allen has been excellent in this series. Petrus draws the foul. You know, here's a guy that hasn't played yet, waiting for an opportunity, and then just makes a grown man move in the middle of guys that want to foul him and want to be physical, finishes it with force. Bass played his college ball at LSU, he was a second round pick of the Hornets, first two years with the Hornets, then two years with Dallas. Signed a four year, $16 million deal. He had saw sporadic minutes during the regular season and even less in the playoffs. And he's a guy that can knock down the mid-range jump shot, can finish at the rim. Certainly can play for a lot of teams in this league. Nate Robinson getting some minutes here. And as the Celtics just wrapping up one of their more dominant performances in their storied playoff history. And that's the thing. Some of these victories, both against the Cavs and the Magic, not only wins, but just dominant wins. Peter stepped out of bounds. Our NBA calendar in the Western Conference Finals continues tomorrow night on TNT. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern. Lakers and Suns from Phoenix. Phoenix helping the home court helps them out. And then game four here in Boston where the Celtics will have that 3-0 lead. And we need some competitive series. This playoff has been brutal. Well, the Suns are a good home team. We hope they can give the Lakers a fight. Well, I got a feeling that if we get to the finals with the Lakers and the Celtics, that will be a very, very competitive NBA Finals. Well, we thought this one was going to be competitive this series. But there's only been one seven-game series. And that's the Atlanta-Milwaukee series. There's some Laker fans hoping that their team will get here for the NBA Finals. I just have a question. What would possess you to wear that jersey to a game that the Lakers aren't even involved in? He's just making a statement. What's the statement? The guy made it on national TV, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that's a smart move by these two guys.